here once again. Independence Live. I've got Mark Boyd, who's the captain of the, the Scottish Surfing Federation. Mark, uh, welcome to Independence Live once again. I, I believe you're taking the Independent Scottish Surf Team to Nicaragua. For the Glad indeed, I. Thanks for thanks for having me back again. Pleasure. Um, aye, so end of uh, end of this month we'll be going back again to the World Surfing Games, so the, the amateur World Championships um, of surfing. I to fly the flag for Scotland again. Excellent. So as as far as we know, the latest developments uh, was it the fifteenth of February? You were a uh, the, the Scotland team was a uh, officially recognised as a an. Uh, a new member of the family of nations of surfing, is that correct? I can't actually well, remember the exact date. Well, with uh, um, Finland at the same at the same time. It was only uh, it was only a couple of months ago we got our um, official. Uh, so last last year our membership application when we went to compete in uh, Peru at the World Games um, was still pending, but they allowed us to come and compete while they were reviewing our application to become an ISA member. And then um, yep, just this year. Um, our membership was confirmed, so Scotland's an, um, now an associate member of the International Surfing Association, which means um, the voting right is reserved to the Olympic Committee area, which is the UK, but um, we've now secured our right to send a, a Scottish team to compete um, every year at all of these International Surfing Association competitions, which there are several competitions, not only the, the Open event, which is the World Games, there's also um, longboarding and Stand up paddle boarding, junior ladies, or um, lots of different divisions, and there's lots of different events. So it's a great thing for Scotland. Must feel really good, though, eh? Just you know, that's that's you now. You're the proper. You're, you are the Scottish team, and you're representing the nation now. Aye, it's a it's a it's a sigh of relief just to know that um, we've protected the right for um, the future generations as well. And this is a thing for years to come. Um, we can always have Scottish representation at the highest level. It was always the case that Scotland could compete at the European um, Surfing Championships, so we could always send a team to that. Um, but I, it's just fantastic that we can get on the world stage and it'll do great things for Scottish surfing to be able to compete at that level and push the standard. And, aye. Okay, so there wasn't really any ceremony for a for this um, a decision of, to, to include Scotland in the family of nations, but uh, have, have you had uh, much congratulation from within the world of sport or within... You know, within Aye, a, lot of our, a lot of our um, a lot of our peers, a lot of the um, other federations. So William Watson is the president of the Scottish Surfing Federation. He's received a lot of emails from from uh, other countries, um, presidents of their federations, congratulating Scotland on their yeah. on their membership. Finland were um, one of the other nations who were yep. adopted into the ISA at the same time. So I think that now makes ninety five members of the the ISA in total. So. Um, there's a lot of surfing countries. Well, we're all moving forward, aren't we? So, um, in terms of this year's team, is it the same uh, group that's competing? Have you got new members? It's a it's a slightly different group this year. So we made we made our selection based on the Scottish National Championships, and um, unfortunately, a couple of the couple of the finalists are unable to compete. Um, and compete this time. One of them's having a baby. One of them's going to be offshore. But we've still got a great a great squad going out. Um, including myself, I'm also the secretary for the Scottish Surfing Federation, but yeah. I compete a lot as well. So, um, myself um, from Thurso, we've got Ali Matheson from Car Bridge, Alan Harper um, from the Murray Coast, um, and we've also got Megan Mackay. She's actually a replacement for um, Phoebe Strachan from Dunbar. Phoebe's unfortunately having an operation. Um, so she's going to be unable to come. So Megan is only seventeen, right. so she's taken she's taken Phoebe's place, um, and we've got Shona Blackadder as well. Um, she's from Thurso as well. And uh, did I mention Scott Main? I, I don't think so. I think I think I missed him out. So we've got yeah. Scotty Main from Thurso as well. So Thurso have got a, um, unsurprisingly really considering that that's the best. Most world class waves in Scotland are located in Thurso, so it's unsurprising that yeah. um, half of the team is made up from surfers from mm -hmm. from the north. But um, it's uh, it's a it's a it's a team from all over Scotland, all four corners. I mean, it sounds to me uh, I don't know too much about surfing, but it does sound to me like it's something that's quite natural for people who live and work by the sea to then take up a uh, you know the, the sport of the, the the sea that's right on shore. 
I mean, most most of the competitors are from areas where you've got. Uh, oh, definitely. I mean, it's it's like if if you were a football player and you lived three hours from a football pitch and you had to get to training, um, it would be a difficult task to become become really good at it. You're really living next to the coast. You know what the conditions are doing. You can be on it when the conditions are good. And unlike football and other sports or, or tennis or whatever, the court's not always there. The net's not always the same height. Um, you really get beyond it with wind and tides and things like that. So living next to the coast is is a really good, a, re- a really big advantage. It's actually quite interesting. In uh, Fraser, I mean, a lot of the best surfers in Scotland, there's two kind of pockets of really good surfers in Scotland mainly. I mean, um, there's a third actually down near Edinburgh just due to population. There's a lot of surfers south of Edinburgh, Dunbar, those areas. There's a lot of surfers down there. Um, so you, you get a few really good surfers as well, but in particular, Fraserburgh and uh, Thurzo produce really good surfers. And um, it's quite interesting how many fishermen from Fraserburgh um, are, are really good surfers. Yeah, I was thinking, uh, I mean, in terms of like ambition, uh, Scotland in terms of the size, what kind of surf is available? Uh, do, do we, is it realistic to expect that Scotland could uh, start to you know, be a sort of top five competitor in these World Games? Uh, well, in the future, I know, at the moment, uh, you get the main, towards that. The main factor we've got battle against is the cold. And it does, there's no arguing, it will and it always will deter you from putting in as much time as you can in a tropical country or a country that's a, it's a lot nicer climate. So it's always going to be a factor that will hold people back. I think people will always have to travel a little bit um, to learn certain manoeuvres and just to really get a bit of extra training, um, just with the dark nights and the cold and things like that. But yeah. as far as wave quality goes, um, Scotland's as good as anywhere. And yeah. there's, I mean, we placed our first time at the World Championships last year. We placed 16th in the world. So, mm-hmm. um, so that means we're now a premium member of the ISA. So we actually have to pay a bit more for our membership. But um, it's uh, is that a good thing? Uh, it's it's unfortunate we have to pay a little bit more, but it's a great thing that we came sixteenth in the world. So there's ni- there's ninety five ninety five member nations of the ISA, and we came sixteenth. So yeah. um, hopefully we've been speaking with Sports Scotland. So hopefully in years to come, maybe in the next couple of years, we'll be eligible for some funding um, because we've placed in the top twenty percent in the world mm-hmm. um, in the sport. So. Yeah. I mean, it seems to me as well is that a lot of a lot of the the stuff that I do actually quite enjoy your videos, and what you see, of course, is all the the technique, the body, you know, operating the board. But a lot, of, I think, a lot of stuff in its instinct, it's uh, it's it's to do with living by the sea, knowing the the, the timings of the waves and. I uh, well, that's, yeah. I mean, it's uh, it's definitely an instinctive sport, and in that you have to. It's always changing. Waves are always changing, unlike, um, like a lot of sports where where things are. Are, more, are constants that you're you're playing on a surface that's a constant or whatever. But um, aye, so things are always changing like that. But then, yet yeah, weather factors. If you just for training purposes, you always want to be out in good conditions training. Um, I mean, it, it helps to go out in poor conditions as well. But just knowing when conditions are, um, when you can train to conditions, it's good to live by the sea just to to be aware of when it's possible to go and train. Yeah. And just for the benefit of the viewers, say uh, I, I watched a wee bit of the surfing last year in the World Championships. I quite enjoyed it. So, what's the format? You've got a certain period of time. Is it twenty minutes? And you've got to judge uh, which are the best waves so that you can uh, put out as many of your manoeuvres on the waves to get the points. Is that how it works? Right, so, so generally, it's um, generally heats are twenty minutes, and it'll be best two waves in a twenty-minute period. You can catch up to fifteen waves, but only your best two will uh, make up your score and um, to get that score you want to perform radical controlled manoeuvres in the most critical sections of the wave with speed, power and flow so that's the judging criteria and that's what you're trying to meet so yeah, doing big manoeuvres um, linking them all together surfing quickly um, and radically which is a bit of a an American word but that's in there in the criteria Oh shit, and, no, no, I understand so uh, let me think so uh, what dates are you away for um, the World Championships? Um, the competition starts, the opening ceremony is on the 29th. So we're, um, we are definitely not going to forget we're kilts this time because last, <laughs> last time at the opening ceremony there was the South Africans and they were in their uh, 
in their national blazers and their beige trousers and the Mexicans had their sombreros on, the Kiwis did the haka. So there was a bit of a display from all the different nations. So um, we felt we felt a bit stupid. We were kicking ourselves, not having our kilts or this like. So well, you, did, you, did have, you had uh, a, a fantastic uniform. It was made by the, the company in Edinburgh. Yeah, that's right. Staunch in Edinburgh made our uniforms. So uh, I, they were really good uniforms. And they're, they're making our uniforms again this year. We've got a nice polo shirt to go with our kilts this time. That's There's right. also um, the supporters kits available to purchase on the the Scottish surfing team crowdfunder page. Can you give us the details of the crowdfunder? What's the, the, the website? How, how much of a target do we need to meet here? So it's crowdfunder.co.uk forward slash Scotland hyphen surfing hyphen team hyphen 2015. Um, that's the page and you can read all about the team and look at some pictures and a video on there and um, see what all the rewards are. There's loads of different rewards for donations. Uh, like the uniform and uh, surfing lessons and discounts off surfboards and loads of different things. Um, loads of companies have uh, made some donations to us for giveaways. Um, and our initial target is just 3,000. And the reason we've set it so low is just if you, with the crowdfunder website, if you don't reach a target, you actually don't get any of the money back. It goes back to the pledger. So we set it really low just to ensure that we all get a bit of subsidy for the trip. Um, but the trip in total could cost up to £16,000 or more. So um, we're just trying to raise as much as we can towards that. And anything that's not spent in this competition will go towards the next one, which is the European Championships in September. OK. Um, <clears throat> now, during the Games, uh, will you be able to uh, give us an update during the... Uh, uh, come on, Independence Live, just let us know how you're getting on, because it's, it's not something that we can all see... <clears throat> I hopefully we can uh, hopefully we'll be able to set up a webcast. Depends how the Wi-Fi is in Nicaragua, I suppose. But it's, it's an issue, yeah. We just want to make sure everybody, you know, follows the dream that's happening here, you know. Aye, as long as we've got some internet connection, we'll um, we'll definitely give you an update. Okay, excellent. So, Mark Boyd, thanks very much for joining us. It's been absolutely fantastic. We're really glad that you know this this is actually happening. Uh, is there anything else that you want to add uh, just before we conclude? Uh, I just uh, a massive thanks to William Watson, uh, who's the Scottish Surfing Federation president. He's really done an amazing job. Um, the last the last few years, we've kind of went from strength to strength, and what we've achieved with the Scottish Surfing Federation, and um, just having our our Sport Scotland um, recognition and our ISA membership are just huge things, especially for the competitive side. So um, it's really good that we're getting the opportunity to go and compete at the with the World Championships and the Europeans and all these competitions. It's a great thing for the juniors to look up to and um, push the standard of surfing in Scotland. Indeed. One second. I'm just going <clears> to... <throat> I'm going to toast you. I've got my uh, unicorn chalice here. So, uh, my hat off uh, and a toast to Scottish surf team. So, Mark Boy, thanks very much for joining us. I'm just going to... I should get a drum, but... <laughs> 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 Don't you be drinking anything before the games, okay? No, nah, that's it. Should um, should be uh, should be uh, teetotal now until the until the competition's over. In training, I actually did a triathlon today, really? first one I've ever done. So trying to get in shape before we go out there. Right, I understand. Okay, hey, right. So, Mark, thanks very much for joining us. I'm just going to say thanks very much to all of you who joined us early because uh, Mark's got uh, something very important he has to go off to. A uh, one little last mention. Independence Live is also running at yet one other uh, crowdfund. We require 5,000. Uh, so just look at the proposal which is out there, independencelive.net. Look at the work that we've done. We've got the archive on the live stream. We've got a YouTube channel. We've got the website. We're writing blogs. So consider all the work that we've done. Keep us live. Let us continue. Okay, Mark Boyd, viewers, Kevin on technical support, David, Independence Live, peace. Brilliant. Thanks for having us, David. See ya. Yep.